Hello, my name is Neil Falls. I'm a Royal College of Veterinary and Specialist in Bird Medicine, also a European College of Zoological Medicine dip, uh, Diplomat in uh, Avian Medicine. It's my great pleasure to talk to you today, not only as an avian specialist, but also someone who's used F10 for more than 20 years. And I'm also delighted to confirm that I uh, now have the role of veterinary advisor to health and hygiene. Um, so, and uh, I'm hoping that you'll find this presentation useful today. So today, uh, this presentation is addressing uh, the suppliers, the shippers, and the agents for falcons, uh, in particular to the Middle East market, but of course, anywhere in the world it's relevant. First of all, if I can just explain that um, F10 and health and hygiene are different to other disinfectant manufacturers. We have safety testing of all finished products. That's not the individual constituents, but the end product as it would be to be used. And that's conducted by government accredited quality controlled laboratories. And that's in respect of skin, uh, eye and respiratory uh, toxicity. And all that, uh, all those safety uh, data certificates are available to you. We also have efficacy testing in the same way of all finished end products carried out by government accredited quality controlled laboratories. There is considerable information, not only testimonials, but all the safety, the efficacy and the application instructions and much, much more information is available on the website. Uh, links to all of that are provided for you in the YouTube uh, information introduction. So health and hygiene provides added value to all its products across its range with training and education of distributors, of clients and end users with this and similar presentations together with that comprehensive fact packed website. So I can honestly say that health and hygiene is an ethical and evidence based company. And whereas other companies may say, oh, yes, it works. What health and hygiene does is we provide the efficacy and the safety data sheets for all users on all subjects so that you can have confidence in the products that you're using on your patients and you're advising to your clients. Okay, so in respect of people who are supplying falcons to the end user and health and hygiene, we have an awful lot in common. You might even say we're like peas in a pod. Our success is like yours. It's all about the quality of our products. And that builds our reputation for client satisfaction, just as it does for you. But how do you maintain yours? Well, obviously it's not just a question of providing quality birds, but it has to be birds that stay healthy, whose new owners have an opportunity to take them out hunting and competing and showing them to their friends and their family, who of course in time will become the purchasers and your next clients. How, what do you do to maintain your reputation? Well, of course you have to build confidence in your customers by showing them that you understand the need for infection control and how to achieve it. To always provide quality birds, you cannot source them from just one source. That means you need to buy in birds from different places, they will mix, and of course they will share pathogens. Birds will be stressed in transport, quarantine, and as they go into new management. And some of those birds will be carriers of disease. How do you maintain that reputation? Well, mixing birds from different sources, Managing birds that are inevitably stressed, some birds are bound to get ill. Some birds are bound to shed contagious pathogens, potentially infecting other birds. Not only do you need to manage this, but you have to demonstrate that you're doing so. So you show to your clients, you show to your customers that you understand to get quality birds, they must come from different places because you get the best from the best but then you need to manage that risk of infection and assure them that they're buying a quality of bird that is not going to suffer from illness after purchase. Remember, 
Birds hide the signs of illness for as long as they possibly can. They have a higher metabolic rate than mammals. So once they get sick, they get sicker and they die quicker than mammals do. So prevention is the key. And of course, from your point of view, maintaining customers' confidence is absolutely essential. So birds from different sources should be kept separate until they pass through a quarantine period. And if you can't keep them separate, every time new birds enter your collection, you must consider your whole collection is in quarantine and control infection by using fogging to do that. The biggest stress-related disease in falcons is, of course, aspergillus. Falcons don't need to be in a moldy or dusty environment to suffer, suffer aspergillus. They only need to be stressed. When they're stressed, their immune system is suppressed and they can no longer cope with the level of aspergillus spores that they meet on a day-to-day -day basis. So you must reduce spores in their airspace to prevent disease and at the same time sanitize their airways to kill off any aspergillus spores that they've already breathed in to their respiratory system. So here we have a view of a fixed static uh, multi-port fogging machine that you could easily use in your uh, bird accommodation, your quarantine area, or in, within your store itself. And here we have other foggers, uh, portable foggers, uh, being used in this case in my hospital situation. On the right hand side we can see the bird's heart with the liver here, the liver here, and this is the air sac, and we can see aspergillus lesions in there, and of course the gut at the back here. Here we have the heart, the liver, and the orangey bit down there is the lung, and again great big aspergillus uh, mold spores there, and another one here. So you just, you see just how horrible it is. And this is a syringeal lesion, this is the one we see when birds lose or change their voice, this is the windpipe and there's another lesion at just the start of the primary bronchi where the vocal cord is. So what's the consequence? If you fail to prevent infection, you fail to reduce the aspergillus spores in the airspace, you will get dead birds. Not only that though, loss of your investment, your stock, loss of your reputation and the confidence that your customers have in here that, that uh, reputation just simply evaporating and you just can't afford to allow that to happen. It must be and it can be prevented. Not only aspergillus, we have viruses. Of course, we have avian influenza, West Nile virus, Newcastle disease and avian pox and bacteria, predominantly E. coli, Pseudomonas, Staphylococcus, Klebsiella and Staph aureus. Numerous other bacteria as well all of which we can control with that 10. Here we have avian pox. We see lesions around the, the beak of this falcon here and on this toe here. So these are tripox. We then have Newcastle disease. We have this uh, Saker falcon from Dubai with Newcastle disease, highly infectious and highly contagious and inevitably fatal. What has it taken to control COVID in humans? And yet one has to say that avian influenza and Newcastle disease are far more contagious and life-threatening for falcons. What are you prepared to do? What must you do to protect your stock and protect your livelihood? Regular fucking with constant new birds, transport, quarantine, visiting veterinary facilities, visiting clients coming in to see your birds and to handle them. We, and, and of course, those clients, we don't know where they've come from, what diseases they've been in contact with. So the risk of contagious infection within any group of falcons is high. And it is absolutely essential to use fogging three times a day for half an hour to minimize the risk and to assist in treating patients. F10 is, of course, safe for fogging. Not only is it doesn't corrode metal, which is essential if you're using a fogging machine, but it's also safe for inhalation by both birds and staff. And F10 is pretty well unique for those properties within the disinfectant market. We also need to control insect vectors, again, within your facilities. Here we have pox lesion on the eyelid here and on the feet here. 
West Nile virus, as well as pox, we know is spread by insects. Amyloidosis, also spread by insects. And then we have blood parasites, Babesia, Hemoproteus, Leucozytosone, Plasmodium, all of them spread by biting insects. So what do we do? Well, we use F10 wound spray with insecticide sprayed onto webbing material that you set up on the sides and the roof of your uh, facilities to prevent insects coming in. As far as Bumblefoot is concerned, we should be applying F10 germicidal barrier cream every three to four days to the feet, the skin of the feet of our birds to control Staphylococcus that gets on there. Also spraying the gauntlets and the perches with F10 FC 1 in 250 dilution to control bacterial contamination on the perches and the gloves. Remember, Staphylococcus is not naturally found on birds of prey feet. The infection comes from the falconers and your customers. They come in, they handle the birds feet and they contaminate them with Staphylococcus. And that is the main cause of bumblefoot. So you need to prevent that by putting the germicidal barrier cream onto the feet every three to four days. Now, these are the key things that you need to do. Easy to do, cost effective to do, and wonderful to maintain your customer's confidence in you and to make sure that you are providing only fit and healthy birds that are going to fly well, please and satisfy your customer's needs. So use F10 daily, maintain health and confidence, prevent to survive in business terms. All the references we have here are on the YouTube uh, information uh, uh, entry uh, part. So you can look up all the references there. You can look at all the links to the health and hygiene site. I hope you found it useful. I really honestly believe that the use of F10 on a regular basis with fogging like this is the way for you to protect your business interests and to survive as a provider of quality falcons. Thank you very much for your time.